the overall number of Aboriginal female homicides and unresolved missing Aboriginal females. And this review totaled 1,181. They're not missing. They're not like so many misplaced keys or your wallet or your sunglasses. These women and girls were stolen. Candice, what was the last thing that your sister Shelley said to you? The last thing that Shelley said to me before she turned and walked away was, don't ever say goodbye. You know, it was our visit was coming to an end, and I was coming back here to Fort McMurray, and I said, okay, well, we love you. Goodbye. Mm. And she walked away and she said, I love you. And then she turned back and looked at me, and she said, don't ever say goodbye. And that was the last thing that she's ever said to me. That was a time you were having a reunion with her, that you were reconnecting with her after you hadn't been, uh, you hadn't been connected for a while. Yeah, that's correct. Um, we haven't spoken for exactly a year. And we reconnected at my grandmother's place in Edmonton. I had no, no idea that Shelley was there. About 10 minutes after I arrived, my grandma said, Shelley's here, you know. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, really? And then right after she said that, Shelley walked through the door, and um, she had the big smile on her face as usual. And we just reconnected, and it was a, it was amazing. We had a really great time. We actually celebrated my daughter's one one birthday, uh-huh. her first birthday, yeah. When did you feel that something had gone wrong? I felt something had gone wrong um, after her phone was disconnected early November because um, after I left from Edmonton, we were reconnected again, so we were texting. And the end of August is when I really received the last text from her. So I tried connecting with her between the month of August and November, texting her, calling her. Her phone was still connected. It would still ring, and my text would still go through up until November. I woke up one morning and I called her and her phone was disconnected. And at that time, I automatically knew that something was wrong because Shelly's always paid her bills. She always had her phone. She, that's the way that she stayed connected with family was through her phone. So I connected with all the family members after that, and I said, you know, have you seen Shelly? Have you heard from her? And then I also went as far as going on Facebook and connecting all her friends and asking them to. And um, everybody gave me the same answer, which was they haven't heard from her since the end of August, which was pretty odd. And then I immediately contacted police, mm. and I told them that. And they said, well, you need to do these procedures. So procedures being a, what? What, what, did, what were they talking about? They said, well, you know, I need to ask around. I need to, I need to contact the hospital. So there's a procedure that they have to go through before they can make a missing persons file. I'd done most of the procedures, and everything came up as, you know, Shelley, I couldn't find her. Just over the past few days, we have spoken with other families who have uh, who've lost women, and they, they say that, well, the police failed to give them much help. What was your experience? Was, was, there, was the response adequate? The response that I got from the police... Um, was like, you know, I came to them with my concerns. I had so much ideas on what to do, on how to locate Shelly, and so many ideas on, like, oh, yeah, like, ask around, like, the apartment building where my grandma was staying. Because apparently there was a witness of some man going into my grandma's house and taking out suitcases. This is one of the things they said to me. They said, how is anybody going to tell us if they've seen that person. I said, well, you don't know if you don't ask. Mm. It seems to me that they've basically given up and said, oh, well, she's missing. Nobody knows where she is. There's nothing more we can do. But I feel like I'm doing their job by doing doing more than what they say that they, can, that they limit themselves that they do to do, right? So th- what we heard from others is that they felt that Police made assumptions because they were First Nations that they felt they whether it's true or not they they felt that the police made assumptions that a First Nations woman or a teenager would 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 run away and uh, not be someone that they would consider to be missing 
the way they would another person. That was their perception. That definitely came up in some of my conversations with the police. I let them know one day I called and I was getting a little frustrated and I told them, I said, you know, well, Shelly is a person and I, I, it bothers me that they kind of label First Nations and say, oh, well, Shelly lived a high-risk life. They keep blaming the victim for what has happened to them. They don't blame society and what's wrong with society. These things shouldn't be happening to innocent people, no matter what type of lifestyle they live. And what do you think? What are your theories as to what has happened to your sister? It's been two years. Uh, Sometimes I I really don't want to think the worst at all. But I have my days, right? I have my days where I consider her to be my angel and she's watching over me. And then some days I, I think, you know, maybe she's just... She just traveled, and maybe she's somewhere on an island, hopefully, and just doesn't want to talk to any of us. But I still keep my faith, and I still keep my hope, because I can't just give up. I have to know what's happened to my sister, and by raising awareness and and trying to bring her home to her family and friends, that's, that's how I keep her alive. You are now 25 years old. Your sister was that age when... She disappeared. How has your sister's disappearance affected you? My sister's disappearance has affected me, like, huge. It's affected me in ways that, like, to be grateful, to um, to be able to have that type of person in my life and the years that she's given me, the memories she's given me. Like, every day I wake up and I... I think of Shelly, and I wonder where she is. There's not a day that goes by that she's not in my thoughts and in my prayers. Um, The month I found out that she disappeared is the month I've changed my life. I've decided to change my life. Because at that time, I knew that I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now if I didn't change. And it's kind of bittersweet, because by getting sober and being able to raise awareness and being able to do the things that I do. And it's really unfortunate that something so horrible in my life that had to happen for me to realize that that's not the lifestyle that I want to live anymore. Candace, thank you very much for sharing the story of your sister with us. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.